You know, there are two main questions in life. The first one is, how do you generate a great dungeon in a video game? I mean, do you just start at the beginning and extend the generation bit by bit, smuggle in a little boss room at the end and that's all? But let's start at the beginning. I'm the other guy from Fiddlestone Games, by the way. We are currently in the process of moving our game prototype from Unity to Godot. If you somehow live under a rock and can't imagine why we left Unity, don't worry, we made a video about it if you're interested. Our game includes a segment where players are required to walk and fight through a basement that gradually evolves into a dungeon as they venture deeper. To add more excitement and variety to the game, we decided to make this part procedurally generated. So in the prototype we did exactly that. However, I must admit that our young and inexperienced indie game dev imagination tricked us once again. Yeah, turns out generating things completely random means that everything becomes random, uncontrollable and confusing. So this is an example of a dungeon before. The smallest unit of our dungeon is a room. A room could be a simple corridor, a room full of enemies, a special room with some loot or a boss room. Every room can have different sizes, but at least two potential connections to other rooms. Connecting two rooms would require them to have fitting connections. If not needed, we just fill the connection with a wall. So we do have four steps in our algorithm and maybe you can guess why they lead to problematic dungeons. The first one is to spawn an initial room. This would be the place where the player starts. In step two, we would then slam some corridors to one direction. In step three, we would look at all open connections and try to spawn some new enemy rooms. Checking a possible room was a great weakness of our performance, by the way. We will show you how crazy fast we got in comparison at the end of the video. We would then repeat steps two and three as often as we wanted. Spawning corridors first and then some enemy rooms. The fourth and final step would be to add a special and a final boss room. There is also a bit of black magic trickery involved, but that would be too much in this video. So let's analyze what the problems of our approach are. Yeah, the performance could be improved. Let's add it to a list. Maybe you can see it here if you put yourself into the position of the player. Sometimes the dungeon is like a maze. The player loses orientation and has to walk the same paths over and over again. Okay. Let's say you started the dungeon journey. You look forward to a great new adventure, so much to explore, and then all of a sudden, the final boss. Another issue is that some paths end just in nothing. It feels disappointing and like you've been tricked by the game. If the player follows a path all the way, he should be rewarded. We could go on with a lot more problems, but we will stop here for now. Our poor little indie game dev hearts can't take it anymore. So how do we fix all these points? Well, the first one should be easy. The reason for the bad performance is that we spawn every room and check if they fit. Spawning new objects is always costly. That's the reason why there are so many buffers used in video games. Maybe we add a buffer at a later time, but there's a simpler fix. We need to know the dimensions and the connections of our rooms before we spawn it. And if we found a fitting room, only spawn this one. To make it even simpler, we decided to make all rooms exactly the same size and place them on a grid. Each side of the room can have exactly one connection in the middle. So let's do that in Godot. Let's start with the blueprint of all rooms. Now let's create the actual room in which the player starts. In Unity we used some default squares for the walls, but we can draw something nicer to look at. Voila, a step in the right direction. Now that we have our first room, everything else looks kinda empty. We need some background. Nice. But this looks weird. Let's fix it with a sprite mask. Three hours later. Mm, masks in Godot seem to be a little tricky for now. But we found a quick workaround with controller nodes. We need more rooms. Much better. Back to our list. The first one should be fixed now. We thought a lot about the other three points and came up with a solution that seemed to be too simple. But then we remembered the KISS principle and decided to stick with it. As in the old version, we started with an initial room. The next step is to spawn a sequence of rooms by choosing only three directions to spawn the next room. 
This avoids dead ends and guarantees to be able to spawn exactly the amount of rooms that we want. A boss room comes at the end. During coding we noticed that the strategy pattern would be a great fit, so that we can exchange our dungeon generation strategy with an even better one in the future. So here in Godot you can see the new generation in action. We can control the length of the sequence in the editor. After the generation of the main path we choose a certain amount of open connections, generate some side paths and place a special room at the end of each of them. After a quick coding session, everything seems to be working. Okay, now that everything is done, how big are our performance improvements? Seems like we improved our dungeon situation quite a bit. The new dungeons are by no means perfect and the game is still in a stage of early development, but from a distance it looks like a pretty good improvement. If you're interested in our previous work, we created a game called Oakley's Adventure. You can check it out on Android and iOS. And if you're interested in the current work, we will make a lot more videos. Bye.